Bhagavad Gita, text 4.34 Acquire that wisdom through humble resignation, relevant inquiry and rendering service to the wise who have realized the truth. They, in turn, will impart wisdom unto you. By resigning oneself to the preceptor, knowledge is revealed. Proper action, Krishna teaches, bears the fruit of knowledge. The disciple should learn to make spiritual practice his life's duty and stick to it. Identification with a particular guru is the recognition of a specific direction valid for oneself in spiritual life. This identification involves glimpsing one's own spiritual potential. The practitioner's own heart, free from the clutter of material desire, appears before him in the form of Sri Guru. We are accustomed to making material knowledge part of our agenda, but spiritual knowledge has an agenda of its own. This knowledge reveals its agenda and the fact that we are part of it when we approach this knowledge on its terms. These terms are laid out in this verse, humble submission, prani patena, relevant inquiry, pari prashnena, and the rendering of service, sevaya, to realized souls who represent divine knowledge in this world. When we do this, spiritual wisdom chooses to reveal itself to us, not otherwise. Pranipata means humble submission to the Guru out of respect for the wisdom he represents. This submission is natural and it creates an inner state of receptivity, Pariprajna means asking questions such as Who am I? And why am I suffering? Relevant inquiries are not those questions asked merely out of the desire for intellectual stimulation, but rather from a sense of urgency for spiritual growth. Such inquiries are relevant to one's immediate advancement in spiritual life. Here, the word seva indicates affectionate service. Although the scripture mandates that one must learn from the Guru, this scriptural law has love at its heart. The sincere disciple generally feels that his highest prospect lies in hearing and serving the knowledge imparted by the Guru. I must surrender here, for my life's highest prospect will be realized in this. This feeling arises within when we hear from one who has been commissioned to collect our soul for divine service. It is love that forms the bond between guru and disciple, not law. In this verse, Krishna speaks of a plurality of gurus, jnani anaha, and at the same time of the singularity of guru tattva. The word jnani anaha is plural. However, in Sanskrit, the plural is often used to indicate respect for one person, rather tend to indicate more than one person. The spiritual preceptor is worthy of the highest regard, and this is indicated by the use of the plural in the word jnani naha. In principle, the guru is one. He represents the singular Godhead. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 11.17.27, Krishna says that he himself is the Guru, Ajaryam Mam Vijaniyat. This does not mean that the Guru is God. It means that God chooses one or more of his devotees to represent him, 
and such a devotee should be honored as though he were Krishna himself. Thus, even behind the multiplicity of instruction, the disciple detects the direction of the one Godhead. The singular Godhead has many representatives. Thus, within the oneness of Sri Guru, there is simultaneously a plurality. In the Gaudiya tradition, there are both initiating Diksha and instructing Shiksha Gurus. They are to be honored equally, yet their functions differ. The initiating Guru is usually the one who prescribes the practice for the disciple, while the instructing Gurus help to fine-tune this practice. The initiating Guru must be singular, whereas one can embrace a plurality of instructing Gurus. If one enrolls in spiritual culture under the guidance of a Guru, one will simultaneously experience a plurality of Gurus, for in discipleship one is linked through one Guru to a succession of Gurus, Guru Parampara, all of whom benevolently lend support to the disciple's progress. Such a sincere disciple may also get support from other saints or instructing gurus to pass through the door of opportunity opened by one's initiating guru. However, one who, in the name of accepting many gurus, does not submit to one guru experiences neither the singularity nor plurality of gurus. The force of Krishna's emphasis on hearing from and serving a realized soul in this verse is noteworthy. All of the methods of sacrifice previously mentioned require that we learn how to practice them from a teacher, the guru. Here Krishna implores us to approach such a guru, his representative. The power inert in approaching a realized soul is such that it can make one immediately eligible for the direct culture of spiritual life without one's having to qualify oneself gradually through other means. While the study of Vedanta Brahma, Jiyasa, generally requires that one first inquire into and pass through religious practice, Dharma, Jiyasa, this prerequisite can be waived if one is fortunate to associate with a realized soul. This is the opinion of both Shankara and Baladeva Vidyabhushana. Over the next four verses, Krishna describes the nature of the knowledge one receives from Sri Guru.